All right, so we just talked about standing waves. Uh, once again, let's just do a quick review before I work some problems. But a standing wave on a string will have a frequency dependent upon the number of harmonic that you want as n, v, all over 2L. This is for standing waves on a string. We know that the wave speed on a string depends upon the tension and what we call the linear density of the string. Okay, and so this V right here can be plugged into that velocity that is right there. This L that's right here is the length that the wave is bouncing back and forth on. So this is the length that the wave gets to move back, gets to move back and forth on. Okay, and so... Let's look at some of these problems. This is in your packet. This is after the standing waves part. It says a metal string, so once again, good thing, it's a string, is under a tension of 88.2 newtons. So F sub T is 88.2 newtons. Uh, the length is 50 centimeters and its mass is 0.5 grams. Question A, find the velocity of waves on the string. So we know the mass of the string is... 0 0.0005 kilograms and we know that the length of the string is 0.5 meters all right so we know velocity is equal to ft all over the linear density remember mu was used for friction still is but you got to know that it's in this particular format it's the linear density of the string so we know the tension is 88.2 newtons Divided by, let me come over here and calculate the linear density. So linear density is mass per unit length. And so then the mass is 0.5, but then we converted it to, to uh, kilograms. So we divided by 1,000, so we get 0 0.0005. Divided that by 0.5 meters. So let me go ahead and write that down. 0 0.0005 kilograms all over 0.5 meters. And I get 0 0.001 kilogram per meter. Now remember that ratio of mass to unit length doesn't change as long as we're dealing with the exact same string, kind of like density. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. I'm going to square root that, and so I get 88.2 divided by that linear density, then square root that answer, and I get 296.98. So 296.98 meters per second. So if I send a wave pulse down the string, doesn't matter how long the string is, um, doesn't matter you know how fast I hit it up and down, doesn't matter my amplitude, if I create a disturbance on this string with that tension and with these dimensions for its linear density, it will be able to travel down the string at that speed. Then it says determine the frequencies of its fundamental. Fundamental is the very first possible, the lowest, the first overtone is what we call the second harmonic because it's the first one over the fundamental. And then the second overtone is what we call the third harmonic. All right, and for this first problem, I'll take a little bit more time. So the very fundamental frequency we would have on this length of the string would look like that. It would be my first standing wave. That's one. Number two would look like this. Okay, as a standing wave. And then number three would look like that as its frequency. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this formula here. I'm going to say F... 1 is equal to V all over 2L, because 1 times V is just V. So I know the velocity now on a string is 296.98 meters per second. I'm going to divide that 2 times the length. Now they're telling me the length in this case is 0.5 meters, because it's the length of the string. I'm assuming the entire length of the string is used, unless I'm told otherwise. So 296.98 divided by essentially 1 is 296.98 hertz. Okay, meter and meter cancel, I get it per second. Now here's what's cool. F2 is 2V all over 2L, and F3 is 3V all over 2L. But if I look at just this part here, what is V all over 2L? Oh, that is F1. So technically, F2 is simply two times the fundamental frequency, the first overtone or the second harmonic, and F, 3 is 3 times the fundamental frequency. So 2 times, I'll just make this easy by calling it 297 uh, hertz. And then this, oh, excuse me. 
this is 3 times 297 hertz. And so if I plug those in, 2 times 297, you get 594, 594 hertz. So in order to produce the second harmonic, I would have to have a disturbance that was oscillating up and down to 594 times a second. And then the third disturbance would be 3 times 297, and so I get 891 hertz. And the reason I got 297 is because I just took 296.98 and said it's basically 297. So those are my first and second overtone, respectively. All right, let's look at the next one. It says a string that's 2 meters long is driven by a 240 hertz vibrator. So the, the, this, the frequency is 240 hertz. The string resonates in four segments. So basically, we would see the string do that. So you're going to see this kind of action there. All right, there's four segments, which means it's the fourth harmonic, or n equals four. What is the speed of the waves on the string? Okay. Well, we know that velocity is equal to tension all over mu. But another way to calculate speeds on a string is using the frequency is equal to nv all over 2l. So I'm going to solve for v. Multiply both sides by 2l and divide by n. So v is 2 times the length times whatever frequency we're interested in divided by the number of harmonic. Remember, that's the number of harmonic. And once again, don't get confused. n equals 4 would be the fourth harmonic, or it would be the third overtone, because it's the third one over what we call the fundamental frequency. So 3 over 1 would be 4. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 2 times the length of the string is 2 meters, the frequency is 240 hertz, and then n is 4 in this particular case. So 2 times 2 meters times 240 hertz, that meters times hertz would give me meters per second, and then divide that by 4, I'm getting 240 meters per second, which I guess is kind of cool because 2 times 2, this is 4, and then that cancels with that. And so the units become meters per second. Now here's what I want you to do. Try this one on a separate sheet of paper. And then I want you to turn this in tomorrow. Okay. Now, let me give you some hints. The banjo string is 30 centimeters long resonates. Okay, so that means 30 centimeters is going to resonate or oscillate up and down in its fundamental frequency. Fundamental meaning one. That's the frequency it's going to oscillate at. What's the tension in the string if 80 centimeters of the string has a mass of that. So this is kind of like a guitar or banjo in this case, but banjo string is 80 centimeters. You measure the length of that. That's the mass. You can find the linear density from those two, but this is the actual length that resonates. Okay? So I'm going to use these two values to find the linear density, but when I look at this particular format, this formula right here, that L is the amount of string that vibrates. So like on a guitar, the only part that vibrates is between the bridge and the nut even though your string is longer than that, so that I can wrap it around the guitar. Okay? So try that problem for tomorrow.